Uh, uh, okay. Okay, so we have already went over the gameplay and graphics last week. Now today, I want to talk about what the future might hold for Alan Wake 2. So just going through the DLC we know we will get, along with DLC we might see in the future, then I want to go through New Game Plus, and then last, I want to shortly go through all of the connections, easter eggs, and secrets that I found that I didn't really have time for in last week's video. Without further ado though, I think we should just hop right into the future of Alan Wake 2. Really quickly, before I get into that though, if you enjoyed this video at any point, it would mean a whole lot if you decided to hit that like button and subscribe. But right to the DLC first. As some of you may already know, we have known about the first two DLCs since the release of the game, but the question is, will there be more? Well, I will get to that, but first let's step into Night Springs, the first DLC that should come to the game. What we have heard about the Night Springs expansion is that we will get to play as characters we've seen before in the Wakeverse, experiencing what sounds like an anthologic adventure with every quote-unquote episode being a new story. The first thing this makes me think is at the beginning of the game, Logan and Saga talk about the new season of Night Springs. So will the DLC be that full new season? Every episode being something different? And then the next thing I'm predicting with this DLC is that it will take place before the events of Alan Wake 2 and will give us a lot more backstory to who Mr. Door really is. So the first reason I think that it will be the new season that Logan and Saga talk about is the different clips you can find of Night Springs are mostly about the new season coming out with the narrator and host actually being Mr. Door. The other reason I think Mr. Door will be very prominent in this DLC is near the end of the game, Door tells Wake that everything had gone on too long, but he did enjoy their time in Night Springs. So did Door originally use Night Springs to help Alan get out of the dark place? Maybe even knowing he tried to use Night Springs to write Return before? And did him using Night Springs not end up clear enough, causing Door to switch the scene and literally take the approach of talking to Alan straight up about the manuscripts? Who knows? With that most likely being the first DLC though, I bet we will see within the next coming months. I also want to say, I am not inferring that American Nightmare was what Dor was talking about. I think Dor knew Wake used Night Springs as an attempt in American Nightmare, using it thinking it was familiar ground for Wake. Again though, we do not know yet. Moving right on to the next already announced DLC, that being The Lake House. From what Remedy has said about The Lake House, along with what we can piece together in-game, I feel like we can actually assume what this DLC will be about a little more than Night Springs. So in Alan Wake 2, after getting deputized into the FBC, Saga gets access to Estevez's files in the holding area. One of those files mentions The Lake House, an FBC research station and regroup point situated on Cauldron Lake. When asking Estevez more about it, she states that there was a whole group of FBC agents and researchers there, but she could not get any signal and is pretty sure something weird and dangerous was going on. Knowing it is FBC, it makes me think of an email you can find in the dark place. Our best friend Barry Wheeler emailed Alice talking about meeting up with someone named Chester Blessed and joking about joining a cult. He goes further into detail, but I'm stuck on Chester, the wanted criminal that escaped the oldest house and FBC. Do they have something to do with what's going on at the lake house? I don't know, but another thing you can find in game is during the cutscene with Zane, the FBC starts peering through the TV and Zane says they are looking for him and wake. The FBC members we see are actually Casper Darling and Jesse Faden. The director herself. Will we get to see a Jesse cameo in this DLC? What Remedy has to say about it is, we get to investigate the lake house and the mysterious events going on as Saga and Wake's realities merge once more. With this, people are speculating since Control's AWE DLC directly set up Alan Wake 2, there could be a possibility that the lake house sets up Control 2. But that's all we know about that and the rest of the already announced DLC, though that does not mean I can't talk about some good assumptions and what I wouldn't mind seeing as DLC. So I think it would be awesome and totally viable that we get to see something opening up on who or what exactly Ati is, along with his connection to Wake and Saga, possibly humoring the God of the Sea ideas I've been seeing. Speaking of gods, 
After giving us all of that backstory that they did for the old gods, we better see more of our favorite geriatric rockers, and hopefully get some more backstory into Saga's family. The last thing I think could be a big possibility, and what I would love to see, is a conclusion to what is going on with Tim Breaker. I want to know if he is in fact Jack Joyce, or at least a double. What would even be more cool would be to get a DLC where we got to play as Tim as he works his own way through the Dark Place, along with uncovering who Dor truly is in the process. But all of that will just have to come with time and I will 100% make an update video when those come along, giving my thoughts on what I already know will be some awesome DLC. Moving on to something that sounds almost as good as DLC, and that is the New Game Plus, which actually sounds pretty different than the usual New Game Pluses we see in games today. So Remedy is calling the New Game Plus Final Draft, and by that alone, we can already guess what it's going to be like. So we'll still get the usual New Game Plus perks, getting to transfer over your weapons, upgrades, loot to your new game, starting out stocked up. But we also get an all-out change to the story. They have announced that we will get new manuscript pages as Saga and new manuscripts along with manuscript manipulations while playing with Wake. They have also filmed more live action trailers and videos to find littered throughout the world on TVs. And according to Remedy, we will have the option to play out a whole alternate narrative, probably leading to a whole new ending. This is what I assume to be obvious, as with the end of Alan Wake being Alan waking back up, not dead, and having to restart the whole process and manuscript, he says it is not a loop. It's a spiral, meaning he remembers this time around, and will probably now work with Saga to write the final draft of Return, as the name of the new game plus points towards. We know things will be different at least, and I guess we'll just have to wait to see exactly how different. When New Game Plus comes out on the other hand still has to be announced, though we do know it will come in a future update. Speaking of updates, we've seen around 3 to 5, they've all heavily focused on performance and bugs along with crashing, so there is not much to say there. I was going to make a whole different section for updates, but we've only gotten a couple and they haven't really done a lot in the grand scheme of things, just making the game a lot more playable, and so I will just group that up with New Game Plus. But really, that's all we know about what could be coming and what I honestly hope is coming in the future of Alan Wake 2. Now, I want to shift this video over to a slightly different topic, that being some secrets, easter eggs, and connections I found in Alan Wake 2. Now, yes, yes, I know, I know this has nothing to do with the future of Alan Wake 2, but I ran out of time in the last video and I wanted to still share some of these cool and interesting things that I and a lot of other people have found. And who knows, maybe they will end up appearing or even leading up to the future DLC, and maybe even future games. The first thing I will start off with is a little theory that I had the first time playing through, but now a whole lot of people would consider it pretty much confirmed at this point, though we don't actually know for sure yet. But the theory is about who Saga's dad might actually be. Obviously we don't know, but Saga doesn't either. Her mother always told her that he died, and she didn't know any other members of her family to ask though looking through files and listening to documents may show us that her father is actually Warlin Dor. So the first thing to think about is Tor and Odin's relationship with Dor, or prior relationship should I say. In the Odin Loses an Eye document, we learn of a battle that ensued back in 1988 where a mysterious figure who stood in between the gods and realms struck a deal with the band taking Odin's eye as payment, then disappearing. Well, 1988 is the same year that Saga is born. Along with this, while talking to Odin and Tor in the mind place, Tor tells Saga that her father was complicated, always planning things out too much, and then there was trouble and he was gone. Complicated and overplanned sounds like Dor, and Dor disappeared in 1988, the same year Saga's father went missing or died, and the same year that the dark figure had taken Odin's eye and left. Along with this, there are a lot of small dialogue hints. Odin saying that some doors are better left shut, even Dor telling Alan that he had dragged someone important into the story, putting them in danger. After taking Odin's eye, the figure even tells the brothers that if their family ever needs help again to strike a deal with him. They say fat chance, but 
I think Tor and Odin going into the lake at the end of the game for their quote-unquote last gig is them striking up another deal with Dor to help save Saga, and this is them being on Dor's talk show and doing the We Sing bit. And the last piece of evidence is actually something Dor tells Saga in her mind place. He says that the Dor family always has been able to travel between realities as it was a power the family had. Well, Saga's able to use the same doors and paths that Mr. Dor uses, possibly showing she has that power and is in fact his daughter. But as I said, the more people find, that one is pretty much confirmed at this point. And speaking of Mr. Dor, I will keep this one short as most people already noticed, but Mr. Dor looks exactly like Hatch from Quantum Break, sporting the same suit, attitude, and even being able to travel realities and multiverses. Is this Hatch, or at least a Hatch double? And thinking about it, does Dor mean his family has powers, or the family of doors, like hatches and gates and doors and stuff, have powers? But that also leads us to, who is Dor really? Well, our friendly neighborhood sheriff Tim Breaker is right on the verge of solving it, leading me into my next thing. Tim Breaker is Jack Joyce. Kind of. Tim talks about seeing Dor in dreams, talks of multiverses and different realities. He mentions having dreams of different people in different cities and different universes, but Dor is always there. He has a whiteboard with all kind of crazy stuff, it goes crazy, but it mentions who could either be Beth or Jesse, or even Saga and the woman from the Return trailer in Quantum Break. He also has mentions of Night Springs, which leads me back to think of what I was saying about Dor being important to the Night Springs DLC. And then the last big thing on that board mentions polyhedrons even having a shape that looks exactly like the countermeasure. Is Tim Jack? Who is he? Does he figure out who Dor is? Will we ever know? That's why I want that DLC. And then some small interesting things about Dor is some Black Pyramid cigarettes, the Black Pyramid being very prominent in control, along with the book Interpretation of Many Worlds by none other than Casper Darling. And on the topic of control, I want to bring up some interesting things connecting Alan Wake 2 to control. Not only are the FBC in and out of Bright Falls leaving documents, sensors, and the such, but a cool little thing I did not think about playing the first time through, but we are constantly interacting with Altered World Events or AWEs. The Lake, Scratch, The Nursery Rhymes, they are all AWEs, even the 2010 event with Alan Wake being the events of the first game are classified as an AWE. But the big thing with the FBC is the ocean view. Now in Control, Jesse finds Alan behind a door in the Ocean View Motel and Casino, an artifact site that the FBC locked down and monitors, while Alan finds Zane in the Ocean View Hotel in the Dark Place. And one of the overlaps that Saga travels through is a bunker that the locals call the Ocean View Motel and Spa. We know that the FBC has been hunting down any other Ocean View locations, but do they know about these? Does this also mean that the Ocean View Motel and Casino has something to do with the Dark Place? Maybe even being a threshold to the lake? Moving on to a location next to the bunker, the Valhalla Retirement Home. Now there's already a whole lot of weird stuff going on here with Ati, the writer's room, Rose, but the weird goes deeper. Apparently the retirement home used to be the home of writer Thomas Zane, and even stranger, no one knew where the house came from, kind of just appearing when Zane popped up in town. Way later, after the disappearance of Wake, Barry, Tor, and Odin are actually the ones who all went in together buying that property, turning it into what they did. The question here though is why? There had to be a reason they chose that location. Is it because the brothers knew Tom, or could it even maybe be Chester Blessed having something to do with that? On the topic of Zane though, and spiraling back to something that I mentioned before, the FBC had been aware of Cauldron Lake all the way back to 1970 with the AWE 35. The file mentioned Zane appearing just as he disappeared, along with all of the events that happened with Barbara Yager. The FBC also knew about the clicker and its possibility of being an object of power, and with Wake being a paralitarian, I can't say that word, but aka someone who has the ability to harness paranatural powers, i.e. Jesse, Dylan, and even Saga now knowing she's a seer with Anderson magic. Uh... 
But now, before getting to one of my biggest and one of my favorite theories, I want to bring up some of the smaller things that I've noticed or just enjoyed really. First off, you can actually find Death Rally arcade cabinets around the town in Dark Place, Death Rally being an old Remedy game. Next, the license plates are pretty well done and pretty spot on without getting themselves in trouble, if that counts for anything. Then, fortunately, we get a return of Pat Main, getting to see him in Valhalla along with hearing some of his radio show. Next thing is, ironically, in the Wakeverse, the actor playing Alex Casey in the Alex Casey films is Sam Lake the same person who made the games and is actually the model for Casey. Then in the dark place, you can actually find a lot of American Nightmare related stuff, from signs quoting manuscript pages in that game to Neon Desert Shores motel displays. So American Nightmare may not have directly affected the story, but definitely has some place in the Wake verse and Alan Wake 2. Almost to the big one, you find posters and signs for Mayor Setter all over the map, but did you know you can meet him in Watery near the end? And he's a dog? The bestest mayor around. Next, this one is another one that could be ironic or it could be hinting at something big, but James McCaffrey makes a return to the Wakeverse before being the voice of Trench, but a big thing going on with Casey is that he looks, dresses, and has the same life as Max Payne, but he couldn't be Max Payne. Too outrageous. But did you know James also voiced none other than Max Payne in all of the Max Payne games? Hinting or coincidence? Who knows, but now on to the last small thing, but in my eyes matches everything here combined. And that is the memoriam at the end of the credits to Lance Reddick, the voice of Hatch in Quantum Break, Brett Madden, the original voice of Alice Wake in the first game, along with American Nightmare, and then Sammy Van Hatalo. I'm probably pronouncing their name wrong, which I do apologize, but they were a co-founder of Remedy and someone who helped bring so many games to life, beloved by many. And I, I just loved seeing that memoriam and it was a great way to end off the game, knowing that they were not forgotten while creating this masterpiece. But that was enough of the small things and I know it is time now to move on to the big fish, pun intended. You'll get that in a second. But that is the theory I have, along with many, many, many other people right now, being that Ati, the amazing janitor, is actually the Finnish god of the sea. So starting with the obvious, Ati is actually the name of the Finnish god of the sea, so I, I would say that's a strong start, but he seems sort of omniscient, knowing where he needs to be and when he needs to be there, always giving Alan and Saga great yet cryptic information. Along with this, the FBC has actually named Ati an entity, being A001. A is the first letter of the alphabet, one is the first number, not including zero, but does that mean he most likely is the first entity found by the FBC? I mean, files and control even show that Ati is so powerful, it goes as far as videos of him hypnotizing people. Along with this, Ati is always mopping with water and throwing some water-themed dialogue at you. Even the last conversation you have with him, he mentions water a few times, saying it can give life or drown it. The one strange thing though, is Ati is in Valhalla, and you can actually overhear some pretty troubling things as Saga. He will become worried and not the happy Ati we know. He says he does not want to be there anymore that he just wants to go home, and that he's lost, lost at sea. I have no clue what this could mean, and if it points towards him being the sea god or just an omnisciently demented man. Nonetheless, I think it's one of the most eerie scenes. Just knowing Ati's happy attitude changing to this is, is creepy, but let me know what you all think about that one in the comments now. But Really, that's all I have in me. I don't think this video needs to be anywhere as long as videos like my Remedy Trilogy video, so I think I'm just gonna wrap that topic up there. And with that wrapped up, I will end this video with a few words. I absolutely loved Alan Wake 2, both times I played it through. I've even platinumed the game, and I never do that, but really it could all be biased, or it could be the fact that this game is an all-out masterpiece, and I cannot wait to see what else comes to the game and the rest of the series, really. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Sam Lake and Remedy, along with every single other person who worked on this game, 
gave us something absolutely special. And I will never forget the experience that was Alan Wake 2. I will say time and time again that this game is a 10 out of 10, and I am rooting for its place as game of the year, though I know some of you may disagree. I also want to say making these past couple Alan Wake 2 videos has honestly been a pain and more work than I've done for most videos, but it's honestly been a blast uncovering everything and playing it a second time through. And really though, I think these past couple videos have droned on long enough, and it's about time to close up my thoughts on Alan Wake 2, and I'll return to it when we get more awesome content. But if you enjoyed this video and haven't checked out the other Alan Wake 2 video I made, go ahead and check it out now. And if you really enjoyed this video, why not hit it with a like and go ahead and subscribe now. And if you really, really liked this video and want to support more vids like it, along with getting your name at the end of every single video, go ahead and check out a membership to either my YouTube or my Patreon now. Don't feel pressured though, you find people already do plenty with the likes, subs, and comments. Lastly, if you heard any music that you enjoyed and you want to hear more, head on over to BillyTheWhip.com or just Billy the Whip on any music platform now. And now that we're here, thank you all so, so, so much from the bottom of my heart for all of the support this channel has seen the past year. I honestly can't believe it sometimes. So thank you all so much. You all deserve the greatest, most spectacular day in the history of days. Billy the boogeyman coming for you. Look out for the pigs, look out for me too. Been chewing them up, spitting the new, spitting the bones, pushing the noose, squeezing the game, been making that juice. No need for the pulp, I'm spitting that too, rip it through.